Now that we've finished talking about gonads and sex cells, let's look underneath the hood of the male reproductive system. Now what we have here is the male reproductive system. This is figures in your book. But let's break down this vast amount of information. Now what we have here is the testes, and these are covered by a visceral layer or the tunica vaginalis. I know anatomists, they love to make things confusing. It's like, okay, we think vagina, we think female reproductive system, but we're talking about tunic. Remember, it's the wrapping and it's the vaginalis. It's talking about how this is forming a sheath. So this is where tunica vaginalis is not in the female reproductive system yet. Now, why is this important? Is this just a sheet of tissue? Well, actually, it's very interesting. If there's something wrong with the tunica vaginalis and it doesn't extend all the way down here, this actually anchors the testes down here. So what happens is there's a deformity called bell clapper deformity. And yes, bell clapper, like how the inside of a bell goes like this. Well, the thing is that if you don't have the tunica vaginalis anchoring your testes in the male, what happens is that the, these testes are free to float around and the thing is that they can twist and torque around where they can actually cut off all the vessels and all of these ducts right here. So this can be also like result in a lot of reproductive dis disease or health, health problems for the male if they have this deformity. And what we have here is, okay, going back to external genitalia, so there's actually a ridge in the scrotum. And you can see this, it goes down the midline. This is the outer ridge, and we call this outer ridge the raphe. So it sound, looks like raph, but it's pronounced something like raphe. I know, it's like, where did they come up with this? But anyway, but as you see, it also extends, this division goes into the inside of the scrotum and up along the base of the penis. And what we have here is the scrotal septum. So just like your nasal septum divides your nasal cavity into left and right, you know, the scrotal septum divides the testes into these left and right compartments. Now let's look at this part right here, this rheumatic cord. So what we see here is that, oh yeah, it's covered in layers of fascia, this connected tissue covering a muscle, but also has this muscle we call the cremasteric muscle. We'll get to that in a little bit. But let's look on the inside of this bundle of tissue right here. And this is what we have. We have the spermatic cord, and you can see there are many vessels and many cord structures running through the spermatic cord. And what do we see here? Well, we have something called the vat ductus deferens, aka the vas deferens, same thing, named for the same tube. But what is this containing? Well, or what does this do? It carries sperm all the way from the testes and then eventually into the ejaculatory duct. So this is the ductus deferens. And then what we have is the genital femoral nerve. These are why testes are very sensitive. If you're a guy, you know how it is. You probably sometime during your life, you know how it is to be hit down there and how sensitive they are. And if you don't believe they're sensitive, ask any guy. And then what we have here, notice that we have arteries. So you have deferential artery and testicular artery. So there's blood supply to the testes providing oxygen and nutrients. But then what about the veins? Well, what we have here is a very complicated looking vein. And this is what we call the pampiniform plexus. And why is it called plexus? Well, plexus refers to any sort of like kind of network. So not just about, we might be familiar with the brachial plexus, which is a network of nerves in the arm. But plexus in this is not referring to a nerve. But notice that this, these veins are very branched and they form this kind of network, this highly interconnected and branched network. So this is the pampiniform plexus. So we have arteries and veins, so we must have capillaries. But the thing is that, remember all the way back to the blood vessels chapter, is that hydrostatic pressure pushes out a little more fluid than is reabsorbed by the, the venules, right? So then the, so what, what happens here and what isn't pictured is are the lymphatic vessels. So you have many vessels, so you have arteries, veins, lymphatic vessels. You also have that important vas deferens or ductus deferens, and you also have nerves. So the spermatic cord takes all of these cords, all of these vessels, and bundles them up in a neat package so they're not disorganized because, again, the, the testicles and are pretty freely moving compared to other body structures. Now what we have here. Okay, we have the male internal genitalia, and this looks familiar, right? So we did talk about the urinary system. So what we have with the urinary system, again, urine collecting in the bladder from the ureters, and then it goes out through the 
than it drains initially through the prostatic urethra, then through the spongy urethra, and then out, do, out, out through the external urethral orifice. Now, the thing is, is, this is why I say men are pretty simple creatures. Why? Because it's, that's the urinary system. And then what we have here is the male reproductive system. First you start in the testes, then the sperm mature in the epididymis, and then they're moving through the ductus or the vas deferens. And then this goes up around to posterior, around the bladder, and towards the back of the bladder. And then it encounters these glands, and you have these accessory glands. So these make seminal fluid. So sperm are the cells, but you also have fluids that help the sperm move along, keep them nourished and healthy, and also help them when during if you have intercourse. They also help the sperm travel through the vagina, through the uterus, and up into the fallopian tube so that they can fertilize an egg. But what we have here is, okay, now it's going through the prostatic, or it actually is going through the ejaculatory duct that's through the prostate. Now going through the spongy urethra, same path as the urine and out through the external urethral orifice. So pretty much male reproductive system, or the male, the re urinary and reproductive system, two tubes that come out of the same hole. You're just arranged differently. Again, this is why I see when it comes to male anatomy, men are simple creatures.